<laughs> and we're the best. <laughs> that was lighthearted. Yeah, it took a while. <laughs> I served. I served in the uh, United States Air Force for six years, and uh, when I went to war in Iraq in two thousand four. And I came out, I came back with a mentality of life is too short. I'm just gonna party and have a great great time, enjoy the alcohol, everything, and just live for the moment. That's great and all, but it's not that it's not that's not a good idea. <laughs> and uh that you, you gotta take a little here, a little there. Um, military lifestyle taught me a lot. Going to war taught me a lot. And when I came out, I was real reckless in how I went about life. And uh, thank God for Japan. Thank God for Japan to give me a chance to. Uh, Grow up, grow up, and one of the biggest lessons I learned here in Japan, you know, it wasn't just about wrestling, to be a wrestler, it wasn't just about wrestling, it was life, it's life, how you treat each other, you know, it's taking care of one another, the brothers of brotherhood, uh, it's, you work your way up, there's just respect. I feel like I'm um, being in Japan has connected all the dots for me to become better as a wrestler, as a human being. <coughs> <laughs> Let me drink to that. Mm. No, but uh, it was great. It was good. I've learned a lot here, and I uh, I love Japan. I love Sydney home. And there's that. You know? hmm. Man, I'm getting deep with these conversations, man. So, yeah. I need to drink more beer. Or maybe I should slow down on it now. Nope, I'm drink more beer. Going back to the Bullet Club, you had mentioned Carl and uh, David and Luke and uh, AJ. And now Bullet Club's changed. Yeah. Uh, there's different players now. Uh, I think, uh, what do you see, how do you see, what was your vision of Bullet Club first? Like, what was the original idea behind Bullet Club? Uh, where is it now? And then, uh, um, where do you see it going? I think that, yeah, um, especially with the changes. Bullet Club, at first, was these group of friends that are very tight, they're brothers, that are on top of their game, on top of the wrestling world. Um, the coach of the wrestling world. And we're good at what we do. And it showed. Now the guys are gone. Some of our, you know, uh, founding members are gone. And now we have these new members. And it's time to evolve. And it can't just be about Zekocho, but Zekocho plus our influence on the new guys coming in that we are able to show and teach for them to be better. The idea of Bullet Club keeps evolving. So hopefully show New Japan what we are, you know, that, that we are about the company, that we are Gaijin, but we're here for Japan to help New Japan become more, you know, that we're all here, we're team players. Oh, I get too deep on that, I guess. <laughs> Feels like it. Yeah. When you first, like, got here, when you first started to get to know Chad. I'm, I've heard quite a few stories of you, Chad, but, like, I don't, I don't know the most. Machine Gun Carl Anderson, huh? Yeah, because he has a funny with Luke that yeah. he tells about. Uh, a story that I have with Machine Gun Carl Anderson. Um, uh, when I first got here, 
I was very wild, very like crazy, like drinking at, to the point where I just lose control and just party, party, party. And I didn't understand the Japanese way, style. We go hang out with the sponsor, everybody says, you know, just relax. But I was jumping around, uh, crazy. And uh, the sponsor had enough of that. <laughs> he said, I, he's got to go home. <laughs> so, but nobody would come and tell me. They said, for a machine gun, he came over. And uh, I didn't really know him. Maybe we knew each other for probably like a month or two. He's like, bro, you got, we got to go home. And, he he had he was my he had a <laughs> he was my babysitter basically <laughs> he had to get me in the cab and then go to the cab home and I didn't understand what was going on I was like what happened is the, is the party finished he's like <laughs> and he's like no bro I was like they had to send you send you back to the dojo man because you you're too wild you're too crazy and I was like and I got angry. <laughs> And I started throwing a fit in the, the taxi. I was like, what? What? That's crazy. My dad. And I started getting mad at him. <laughs> and it wasn't his fault. <laughs> he was just babysitting me. And I'm yelling at him. And he was like, bro, look, man. Don't beat me up. All right? I just, they just asked me to take you home. <laughs> I was like, and then I got real sad. And I, I think I started crying. I was like, <laughs> I was <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> that sent me back to the dojo because I was too immature. <laughs> 27 and immature. Hmm. <laughs> oh, man. What's the craziest thing you've ever done? The craziest thing I've ever done was I volunteered to go to war. I think that was the craziest thing. Because I looked at war like it was this honorable thing to go do because of what I saw on TV, what I read on books, heroes I made at war, shooting and fighting. And I had this image like you'll be a superhero when you go to war. War is horrible. War is the worst thing you can do in this world. That's the craziest thing I've ever put myself through. And I'll never do that again. That's the craziest thing. Another thing that I, what I think is crazy, I think it's crazy that, um, <clears throat> that our whole family came into wrestling, even though our parents tried so hard not to have us come into wrestling. And we're all becoming wrestlers. Well, two of us are. And then you got a younger brother coming in to be a wrestler. I think that's crazy. Sorry, Ma. <laughs> Your mother didn't want you to be a wrestler? No. She hated wrestling. <laughs> Our father was constantly on the road. He was here in Japan, Mexico. So he'd be gone just like how we are two, three weeks, a month, two months, three months at a time. So it was her being a single parent the whole time. So she just, we got to the point where we were like, I think in high school we were watching wrestling. We were really getting into wrestling then in high school because The Rock was big and Stone Cold Steve Austin. We were just like, oh my gosh. Actually like, and then there would come a point where she said, no more rest, no more watching wrestling. Cut that off, no more. I want you to go to school and be a doctor, a lawyer, or something. Not wrestling! <laughs> but, and, and, sorry, Ma. <laughs> and, and, uh, but she, she tried so hard, I think, to keep us away from the wrestling world. And we, tried, we went. We went to, he went to college. I went to military. We try to go away from wrestling, and we just came right back into wrestling. Uh, my bad. But, uh, it, it, you know, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. So, she's coming. Uh, we're bringing her this January 4th to the Tokyo Dome show. 
It's the first time she'll be in Japan. And um, I'm so happy because she gets to see us wrestle together. It's his first Tokyo Dome show. This is my second Tokyo Dome show, but together as, as brothers and I, I, I want our mother to see this. So it's, I'm real happy, I'm real. The gorillas of destiny, God, will see you in Sendai as we dominate the World Tag League here in New Japan Pro Wrestling. G-O-O.